Today, we need to talk about eating fat. Facts about fat. Before we get this whole thing started, do you have a gallbladder problem? Do you have the symptoms? Do you know what they are? Comment below. I'd love to know. What's up everyone? Welcome to my humble channel. Let's get into it. Let's talk about the gallbladder. It's not just about fats and how much fat and all of that. That's a macro video. I wanted to talk about the symptoms that you need to look out for if you have a gallbladder issue in comparison to leaky gut. Or do you have both? So I think right now I'm going to post a picture there or over there on what the gallbladder looks like. If you squint real hard, you'll see this green ball-like shape. This is your gallbladder. And above the gallbladder is the big organ, the liver. The liver is making the bile salts, which drop down into the gallbladder, release through the bile ducts go into the intestine to break down fat. This is an image of the inside of a gallbladder. And that cluster fluck of a mess is formed gallstones and inflammation. Bile salts should be sitting in a flowy solution, but in this case, the cholesterol backs up and starts forming stones the texture of the bile salts is like thick molasses or honey. They form the stones and then when bile is released, stones get trapped into the bile ducts and it hurts. You feel nauseous, you feel bloated and just terrible. You can't do a high fat diet or really any diet without a gallbladder. The liver is going to make bile. Obviously, it's released into the gallbladder, and then the gallbladder releases it through the biliary duct system, and you break down fat. With fat, here's what's interesting, is that it has vitamins in it. If you are in a plane crash and there's no food, first thing your body's going to do is not burn a bunch of fat. No. Your body's going to burn muscle. See, because muscle, this muscle, it's metabolically active and it will make you starve faster. But what you don't know is that in our fat cells, in our fat cells, we have fat soluble vitamins in them, vitamin D, E, A, and K. So essentially you're getting nutrition as you are slowly dying from starvation. You get rid of the part of the body that's going to make you sort of die faster, which is muscle, which is, muscle is very meta metabolically active. So your body's gonna dump the muscle first. Let's look at it this way. If your body is a house, then muscle would be your laundry, your dishwasher, your lights. It's gonna make your electric bill very high. The, your muscle is very metabolically active. You need to eat it. That's a fly. You need to contract it or it sort of dwindles down and goes away. Your body's able to take muscle and convert it into glucose very quickly to keep your blood sugar stable. Protein converts more into sugar more quickly than fat. That's going to be the last thing that your body burns. I often ask people when you're fasting, where is your body getting its energy from? And they say the fat cells. And I'm like, well, then all those people doing cardio should be shredded. No, your body's going to dump the part of the body that's going to make you starve faster, which is muscles because muscles are hungry. Dump the muscle and that'll drop the, the electric bill. That's why I really want you guys to understand the importance of eating fat as opposed to eating a bunch of protein. Protein is going to be converted back into glucose, but fat has the fat soluble vitamins in it. You cannot do a low carb diet without eating high fat. 
The goal is to get into ketosis. You have to train the body to go from burning sugar to burning fat. And eating a bunch of protein keeps it as a sugar burner, which destabilizes your blood sugar and makes you tired and crash in the afternoon. Not give you enough energy. Want you to run towards the coffee. That light, the lack of light, was bugging the frack out of me. So let's get back to it. Eating fat to then train your body to burn fat is the goal on a high-fat carnivore or high-fat ketogenic diet. But to achieve this fat-burning mode, modality, you have to be able to have a functioning gallbladder. And that, my people, is the problem. If your gallbladder is not functioning properly, that means you're not able to break down the fat and absorb the fat and the fatty acids and the omegas and the vitamin D, E, A, and K to then get to the cells to help your body function properly, to get the energy that you need to sustain life, to keep you young and have fat in the dermis layers of your skin. If you're eating high protein, you're not going to have those benefits. The point is to get into ketosis on anything that's considered ketogenic, which is carnivore and keto. Now, low carb, high fat is still starch based. Can't get into keto that way. Introducing fruit, carnivore fruit, not going to get into ketosis and fruit is the worst form of energy. Crash, crash. Ketosis is the stable energy that you want to achieve. But to do that, the gallbladder must function properly. What are the symptoms? Okay, nausea, feeling nauseous when you eat fat, bloated, like bloated in your stomach. You could have pressure on the right side or pain or pressure or pain in the middle of your stomach. Shoulder blade pain is a sign of a gallbladder. Sometimes people will think they have kidney problems. They'll have a radiating pain that goes from the front, from the front to the back. You could have floating stool greasy stool, green poo-poo, green, that's bile running through too quickly through the system. Uh, You could have, well, vomiting would be like full blockage, like stones and shite. Or you can have an aversion to eating fat, like you think that eating like three tablespoons is so much fat and it's not at all. What else would show a pale stool, pale, ashy colored stool. Now you could have leaky gut and have yellow. That's a leaky gut and you have to know the difference. So sometimes people have like just a lighter color stool. It'll be sort of like a yellowish color and it'll still be gallbladder. And then you got to look for bloat, pressure, nauseous, or the need to go poop instantly like sort of an IBS symptom when you eat a lot of fat. Just a little like uh, uh, eating fat. All of these are gallbladder symptoms. So leaky gut is going to give you histamine, rashes, mucus, headaches, itchy, tired. Gallbladder could do that too. Um, Aches and pains would be histamine, yellow stool, Pale, ashy colored, whitish color is going to be more gallbladder. Your poop can float on both where you're not absorbing the fat very well, even with leaky gut. But these are the symptoms. Now we need to go towards fixing the, the darn thing. The solutions are kind of wonky because sometimes even though the body is working and its bile flow is starting to flow again, you still don't feel amazing. It can take a while for the body to sort of work its self out. Different things like ox from a cow, ox bile salts, right? Uh, Some people have a histamine reaction to them, which sucks because they're from a bovine ox and bacteria can grow on it. But if you don't react, that's a pretty good solution. Sometimes they'll have an ox bile lipase blend. So you have double ways to break down the fat so your body can uptake it and use it and convert it into ketones. Also, you want to consider tutka, which is a sort of synthetic mimic of bare bile. 
there is taurine and glycine. These are amino acids, proteins that will help the flow, not just the making of the bile, but the actual flow of it through the pipes. There, you can try things like lemon water to support the liver, the kidney, and the gallbladder. Uh, do not sit in a C shape because when your spine is compressed, the gallbladder gets junked up. When you learn how to get your posture like this, then you can have nice upper trunk flow. All the systems like to work properly. Hydration is very important. A lot of you are dehydrated and not getting enough water through these organs. Uh, obviously, don't eat sugar and carbs. Get some sleep. All the inflammatory issues, you need to take them down getting some sleep because if you're going to get the gallbladder to, to unsludgeify, you need to get some really good quality of sleep. Breathe, walk and move, exercise to get flow, the fluids flowing through all your organs. Patience. Uh, lemon water, apple cider vinegar is... Not so great, I think, for the gallbladder. I think it's better for the kidneys, but lemon, a few drops of fresh lemon into a glass of water is really good for the biliary duct system. Milk thistle can help support the liver and the gallbladder. Pooping, because we don't want estrogen stuck in the liver, creating an issue for all the organs. Yeah. And then dealing with the leaky gut, because if you're having histamine intolerance, you're having inflammatory disorder and the gallbladder won't function properly. When your blood sugar is running high, your body won't start producing and releasing bile the way it should be. And the most important detail is time. Time. And, you know, perhaps you should break up your fats. Sometimes I'll have people do like a high quality olive oil or avocado oil or coconut oil to, because it's more of a more medium chain triglycerides not such dense, thick, long chain triglycerides like which you might find in animal fat. Sometimes people will go and eat chunks of meat, or sorry, rather, fat like the trimmings from beef, from the steak, and then air fry it or grill it or deep fry it and then it becomes crunchy. That's also easier to the gallbladder. It's mostly oils like butter and tallow and lard. These are the ones that are the most difficult that you should pay attention to if you're having a gallbladder issue that you're not aware of. Yes, pay attention. Eating your fats with protein will always help you to digest your fats better. Sometimes drinking your fat in like a carnivore latte or a tea, or God knows you shouldn't be doing coffee, is worse. It's liquid fat, goes straight into the gullet and the gallbladder is like, whoa, too much fat coming in at once and we're all junked up and we need to get fixed first. Yes, eat your fat if you're gonna have butter or ghee or tallow or lard, lard with a protein. If you have a gallbladder issue, try to avoid putting fat into a drink unless it's olive oil. And these aren't ketogenic, okay? Coconut oil, MCT oil, olive oil, avocado oil. Avocados are not ketogenic. You cannot be in a deep state of ketosis on those plant fats. It must be animal fat long chain triglycerides and when your gallbladder gallbladder doesn't work can I speak when your gallbladder doesn't work that's when you do you consume these plant fats for the short term to take the pressure off and also massages on that gallbladder to get bile flow going liver gallbladder there's stuff online you can go and research so you can have that release of bile and you can use these plant fats for the short term, like a week or two max, to keep your body, the hypothalamus going, okay, she's not starving or he's not starving to death. There is food coming in that must be broken down, that has some density to it, dare I say cal caloric density, not really, but a little bit. Yeah. Your egg yolks is not enough fat, okay? Not enough fat. Your one tablespoon or two on the pan is not enough fat. Your one or two tablespoons spoons on the plate is not enough fat of your animal fat to get into ketosis. You have to eat fat for then train your body to then break it down, convert it to ketones and into the Krebs cycle and pass the blood brain barrier into every cell to give you energy. But to have that wonderful reality of ketosis land, 
your gallbladder has to function properly. I hope this helps. I didn't want this video to be too long, and I'm out. Energy. If you guys want to learn more, go to stephanieperson.com. Sign up for a consultation. You can also go to my Instagram at Stephanie Ketogenic, or you can go to my Facebook fan page, which is Stephanie the Business Person. Again, my website is stephanieperson.com, and I have a course. It's a monthly subscription where I cover all three diets because some people's gallbladder is so junked up that they got to start with low carb, high fat, and then slowly graduate into ketosis. Got to get that gallbladder working. Well, is there anything else that I can remember before I run off to my crazy day? And it's so beautiful outside today. Let me show you what it looks like. Ain't it pretty? It's so pretty today. It's a lovely day. Lovely day, lovely day. Get ready for the challenge. My web guy better pull this together by September. I will release the dates. All this information that I talk about in my videos will be in the challenge. Very simplified, so don't be surprised if it's overly simplified so the masses can understand everything that I have in here. And I'm out because the girl's got a lot to do. My Instagram is Stephanie Ketogenic. Facebook fan page is Stephanie the Business Person. Website is stephanieperson.com. Comment below, my people. And tell me if you have a gallbladder issue. Peace.